We all know who Beidou is. At this point, even if you do not have Beidou, you have most likely already heard her backstory. More precisely, her fight against the sea beast Haishan and how she consequently gained her vision after killing him. However, one big question still remains. Who or what was Haishan? The only thing we know for certain about it is that it was a sea monster. I wanted to try and find out more about this creature and so began my research on these colossal beasts. It is almost like a paleontological research, if you will. The reason as to why I wanted to know who Haishan really was is, well, firstly because I too asked myself that question and secondly, but most most importantly, I am a huge Beidou simp. And let me tell you that I found some incredible information on Haishan that you definitely never knew. What if I told you that there was someone who wanted Haishan killed and who used Beidou as a simple pawn? Stick to the end of the video and you will not only have that question answered but others as well. Not only that, but in the end of the video you will also see for yourself how Haishan actually looked like. Based upon a sketch I drew of him thanks to the information I found out that is. Now without further ado, let's begin. I started my research with one base aspect of Haishan, his size. In paleontology it is common to determine an animal's size based upon things left by the same animal. Common findings are for instance footprints, teeth as well as claw marks and... <clears throat> Pee -pee -poo -poo. But Haishan was a deep sea monster, how are you going to find all that? You ask yourself and you are absolutely correct. However, there was a certain entity that might have been present during Beidou's fight with Haishan and that is the Alcor, Beidou's ship. So I traveled to Guyun Stone Forest to examine the ship. I was looking for claw or teeth marks on its hull that might have been left there after the fight. I also kept my eyes wide open for burn marks in case the beast possessed an element power like pyro or electro and unfortunately I found nothing. Three possible reasons for that are firstly that the Alcor might have not been present during the fight after all, secondly that the Alcor is actually a pretty new ship and it had never been commissioned before Beidou fought the sea beasts and lastly that the damaged Alcor was fixed after Beidou's battle. However, not all hope was lost there. Since I was already on board of the Alcor, I then proceeded to ask every single crew member about Beidou, Haishan or even their fight. And again, unfortunately, this time to my surprise, I did not find anything of interest. Well, that was a waste of time. There is nothing in game that tells us more about Haishan, you tell yourself. And no, there is still a lot. The second thing I did in this research was to examine all character voice lines. From all the 100 plus voice lines I listened to, there was a single most interesting line. That line belongs to Chao, who describes the killing of Haishan as indeed impressive. Have a listen. Beidou. I have nothing to do with her. Though there is such a thing as the Leviathan. As a mere human, she has proven her power in defeating Haishan. Now this line sounds quite innocent and there doesn't seem to be any hidden meaning behind it, correct? Wrong. Notice the choice of the verb proven, as if Beidou was put on a test and came out victoriously. This led me to think that Xiao did indeed take part in the master plan of killing Haishan, or at least knew about it. However, he was not the mastermind behind it, since he would have tried to kill the beast by himself if that were the case. Uh, or maybe he wouldn't since he only slays demons. This suggests that even though we cannot be sure if Haishan possessed any elemental power, it was certainly very powerful. More powerful than the average human being and probably even a threat to some adepti or even gods. To get to know Haishan better though, we will have to leave Genshin Impact and take a look at some ancient myths. Beidou's encounter with Haishan does remind me of the story of Moby Dick. However, what caught my attention even more than that old story is the fact that Chao calls Haishan Leviathan. Who was Leviathan and what is his connection with Haishan? Leviathan is a name that by now everybody already knows. In Judaism it was a mythical sea creature with the form of a serpent and is referred in many books of the Hebrew Bible. One of these books is the book of Job, which is especially significant in trying to understand what Haishan was. In the book of Job, Leviathan is a reflection of an older, primeval monster defeated by the god Baal Hadad. Did you notice something? That is right. 
Light, the name Bol, which is also the name of the current Electro Archon. And furthermore, Bol Hadad was the god of storms and rain, quite similar to the Raiden Shogun, isn't he? However, my friends, the similarities between Leviathan and Haishan do not end here, for Leviathan is also seen in other mythologies but in the form of a dragon or a world serpent. Leviathan appears, for example, in a fight with Indra, a god in Buddhism, who is also the god of lightning, as well as in the fight against Thor, a lightning god in Germanic mythology. I believe you too are starting to see a pattern here. In the Old Testament, Leviathan is described as being a giant creature who lives in the ocean's depths. In the sacred Jewish and Christian texts, Leviathan is a creature created by God. And once more in the book of Job, the beast is described as resembling a colossal sea dragon. It is also outlined as a primeval and mighty beast, bearer of an imaginable power. In Hebrew, Leviathan's name means something along the lines of the twisted one, suggesting a kind of twisted appearance as seen in many old paintings and drawings of the same beast. It is written that Leviathan did have glowing eyes as well as the ability to breathe fire. On his back, it also had rows of scales as hard as shields, so tightly stuck together that not even air could pass between them. And apparently, according to the Bible, Leviathan had multiple heads. Regarding Leviathan in the Bible, that is all we need to know. But let us look back at the fight between Balhadat and a certain sea serpent I mentioned earlier. In the ancient text called the Ball Cycle of the mythology of the Canaanites, a collection of stories about the previously mentioned lightning god, we are given a look at a certain beast, servant of the sea god Yem. Its name? Lotan, a seven-headed sea dragon. In the story, Yem wanted to rule over the other gods, so he sent Lotan to kill Ball. However, Lotan was ultimately defeated. As you may have already noticed, Lotan, Leviathan and Haishan are incredibly similar. And this is not the only time a Leviathan-like sea and chaos monster is defeated by a lightning god. A few examples include the battle between Tiamat and Marduk, Typhon and Zeus, Thor and Jörgmund, Jörmungandr, Jörmungandr, Damn, that's quite difficult to pronounce. And even in Japanese mythology, in the battle of Yamata no Orochi against Suzano. In all these stories, the serpent ends up being killed by a god. Since the Raiden Shogun Ball lives in Inazuma, a nation inspired by Japan, let us make a huge jump and take a quick look at Yamata no Orochi and Suzano. In ancient Japanese mythology, Yamata no Orochi is described as having red eyes, eight heads and eight tails, moss, as well as trees grow from its body. His size was about the length of eight mountains and eight valleys. It was so violent that its body was always covered in blood. After defeating Yamato no Orochi, the lightning god Suzano found a great sword with a mysterious power inside its body. This sword can be seen as a gift, a reward, if you will, for Suzano for having killed the eight-headed serpent. Similar as to when Beidou received her vision from Bol after she slayed Haishan. But why would Bol give Beidou a vision? Why didn't? For example, the Hydro Archon give Beidou a vision instead. It is highly likely that Haishan lived near the waters of Inazuma and posed great danger to the people who lived there. Or maybe it is even possible that Haishan and Bol had a dispute, a personal one at that. What it was exactly is something we cannot be sure of. At least, not yet. But why didn't Bol kill Haishan herself? After all, if you want something done well, do it yourself. Perhaps she couldn't, since she is the absolute ruler of Inazuma, she must have her hands quite full with work. Alright, for now, that's enough talk about the mythology of Leviathan and Yamata no Orochi. I do encourage you to research more about them though, very interesting. Now, there are some in-game aspects I still want to mention. Beidou's elemental burst, Stormbreak. Its description is that when using the ability, Beidou recalls her slaying of Haishan and calls upon the monstrous strength and the lightning to create a thunderbeast star around herself. Here we see the usage of the symbolism of the word Taj, which is a word for shield in Old English. Historically, a Taj is a small round shield or buckler. What does a shield have anything to do with Haishan, you ask? Such a shield bears a great similarity to the very durable and stone hard scales of Leviathan. Additionally, when Beidou activates her elemental burst, two snake or eel-like creatures appear and almost seem like they're swimming around Beidou 
those electro shields. Maybe these two creatures are Haishan itself, or at least a weakened form of the beast that was passed on to Beidou in the shape of her vision. Maybe once it was alive, Haishan did indeed have electro powers. However, we cannot be too sure about that. Lastly, in the 1.5 update livestream, there was a reveal of some Inazuma locations. I've read online that there is some speculation that the giant serpent-like bones seen lying near one of the Inazuma islands did belong to Haishan. While this is pure speculation, I decided to take it into consideration. One aspect that supports this supposition is that the serpent bones resemble the physical description of Leviathan and other Leviathan-like creatures. Finally, we are approaching the end of the video and the revelation of Haishan's appearance. With the help of the mythological side of Leviathan as well as the biological side of deep sea creatures, we are able to determine in greater detail how Haishan might have looked like. What is this biological site? You haven't spoken about it yet. That is right and what I'm about to do. We determined that Haishan most definitely looked like a giant sea serpent. Therefore, it must have swum like one. Or, since the beast must have been quite well adapted to its marine habitat, it could have swum like an eel instead. See how sea eels have this elongated dorsal fin? Yeah, Haishan could have possessed a similar dorsal fin to facilitate its movements in the water as well. Based upon previously mentioned descriptions of Leviathan, we can conclude that Haishan too had stone hard scales and could even damage the sharpest of swords. He probably had glowing red eyes that could terrify even the most courageous of all captains. Not Beto though. She's best girl. Ever noticed that deep sea fish have glowing things on their bodies? In case of predators, those biological lights serve to attract prey. Haishan was a deep sea creature as well, so he definitely had glowing body parts. Now, we all know how scary deep sea fish look. I I still have PTSD from playing Subnautica after all. Either way, deep sea fish look scary depending on the circumstances they live in. Haishan's behavior was most definitely not like an anglerfish, but rather like a sperm whale's. Sperm whales can dive to depths of around 1200 meters, but they swim on the sea surface as well, and they clearly do not look like that sleep paralysis demon that watches me every night. As such, the extreme circumstances present in the deep sea like water pressure and lack of light do not apply as greatly to Haishan as to other fish. This means that Haishan did not look as scary as a Pacific viper fish, neither was it as flat as Nyaner's chest. To hunt, Haishan would use long and sharp teeth to capture any prey it could find. Maybe if he were lucky enough, he could even catch one big old fat sperm whale or even a deep sea giant squid. Damn, these things are scary. I really hate them. Just a moment ago, I looked up scariest deep sea fish on Google and I accidentally was in the image category. So I got legitimately scared by just looking at that infinite amount of scary fish photos. All right, now to Haishan's color scheme. As you know, sunlight never touches the grounds of the deep sea. Therefore, the animals there cannot be neon pink. They are brown, gray, black, and sometimes even transparent. Well, there are some animals that are red, but red is an exception because many deep sea animals cannot see that color. Either way, Way for Haishan, I decided to give him a more bluish color scheme, like Osile, moist tentacle boy of the vortex. About Haishan's physical form, I decided to give him a Chinese or Japanese dragon-like form, similar to that picture of Leviathan that everybody knows since it's the first thing you see when you type Leviathan in Google. Haishan could have had two frontal lizard-like legs to walk on land, and additionally, it could have had webbing between his fingers to help him put Push through the water. Now onto the last thing I want to tell you before showing you the completed Haishan sketch. Remember the whole thing with Beidou's elemental burst I mentioned earlier? Those ill-like creatures summoned when Beidou uses her skill? As you see, these things have two boomerang-shaped 
toothed tusks near the end of their mouth and a bifurcated lower jaw. Haishan could have had those tusks for the purpose of fighting with individuals of the same species as well as for hunting larger prey like a sperm whale. Additionally, the bifurcated lower jaw could have helped Haishan to swallow large prey like snakes do. The bifurcated jaw could have also served Haishan to scare away other individuals of the same species. Plus, a bifurcated jaw does look pretty cool if I do say so myself. Alright, we finally covered all the necessary information to understand Haishan. Sorry to waste your time here, I hope you didn't get bored and just clicked away. I sincerely thank you if you're still here. I don't want to waste another second of your time, so here is the sketch. I hope you like the final result. Do you like how Haishan looks? Are there some things you would have made different? I really want to know, so tell me about them in the comments. I'll read them all. If you want to see Haishan's sketch in more detail, you can go visit my Instagram, Twitter or Pixiv where I will be posting the sketch. The link is in the description. Very well, thank you so much for watching and I do hope you enjoyed this video. You, you stick to the end, so maybe I deserve a simple like from you. I really like to make these videos and I have many more planned. So do subscribe if you want to see more. Share this video around with people who would like this kind of stuff as well. Alright, that's all for now. Bye.